<laughs> hey, it's not really a secret. You can have all the club head speed in the world, but if you don't hit it really close to the sweet spot, you're simply not going to get a ton of distance. This is one of the secrets that the PGA Tour guys use or possess that allows them to hit the ball so far. Sure, they have a lot of club head speed, but look at these smash factor numbers I'm putting up here on the screen. 1.49 is basically a, a perfect score, 1.50, and yet look at all these guys who average 1.49 and above. It's basically the whole tour, they're hitting it really close to the sweet spot. So right after this, let's talk about a couple of ways that you can hit closer to the sweet spot more often too and get a ton more distance. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I hope you get enough out of this video that you'll hit like, leave a comment, share, and hopefully hit the subscribe button. All right, so you know who hits the ball more solidly, more often in the sweet spot than any tour player. In fact, he hits the ball sweeter than any human being on earth, and that is a, a hitting robot. A hitting robot, they simply line the club face up with the center of the ball and they swing in it, basically never hit, misses the sweet spot. All day long, center of the sweet spot, center of the sweet spot. So how can you be a little more machine-like, hit the ball a little bit more machine-like? Well, you can control the variables that the robot controls, and that is, a couple of things. The robot has a fixed center. Now the center, the center, swing circle center as my teacher Mike Austin used to call it, is right here at the base of the neck. It is only the left shoulder if you include backswing to impact, but if you include the rest of the swing then this becomes the center, not the shoulder right here. It's the sternal slot right here that where you're clavicles come together in this last little bit of soft tissue. The back side is the seventh cervical. Now, the more steady or centered that you can keep this throughout the swing, the better a chance you're going to have to hit the sweet spot. This is how a robot would do it. So you'd like to develop a swing motion that keeps this point as centered as possible. Now, this is very hard to do and you don't have to be perfect at it to be a really good ball striker. As we've seen over history, there's some motion, even the greatest players, US Open champions, Masters champions, Hall of Famers, they did perhaps move off the ball just a little bit, sometimes going back on the backswing, sometimes coming up on the backswing, but what you're basically doing there is you're perfecting imperfection. You might have to practice more, you might have to have done it from an earlier age, but it is simply harder to hit the sweet spot when you introduce that variable into it. So while you can have a little bit of motion, try to make a motion, try to create a motion, develop a motion that keeps this point centered in space. Now the other variable that a hitting robot will contain and turn a variable into a constant is going to be the distance between that center point we just talked about, and the butt end of the stick. So in other words, the width that the left arm, that the arms together create. Now it, it, it's very difficult to make it longer. You'd have to do pretty weird concoction of your swing, but a lot of golfers will tend to make it shorter. So if we have a certain amount of distance from this point to the end of the stick, you can certainly make it smaller. You could fold the arc like this. Now, I've probably cut the distance in half from the sternal slot to the tip of the butt end of the club, and now I'm going to have to find that original measurement again. So I've moved way off of it. It's a variable that we simply now have to contain. So certainly with enough practice, you could probably make this swing work reasonably, but you're certainly making it harder on yourself. Uh, you'd have to practice a lot, and I don't think it's ever going to perform as well as keeping the distance the same. Now, So now what would that look like? You'd want to put 
the butt of the club right into your sternum here and reach as far down as you can get. So you got to bring that shoulder a little bit into it like this to get a nice wide starting point. Now rotate back and lift the arm a bit and then now stick the club back in that same position that, and you'll see what it feels like halfway back to be maintaining this initial distance right here from here to here is X amount of inches and now this is what it'll feel like the exercise to feel like to maintain it I'm maintaining the same distance between the center and the stick and it gets me really amazingly wide only halfway back and I've just about already completed a 90 degree angle at least 80 degree shoulder turn I've created so this is where the limiting factor for a lot of people is is they have a hard time with their flexibility they're not able to maintain this constant measurement and so they're searching people might get it to here and then they start to break down to here and you're gonna have to find it again on the way down and of course you can compound that with both variables moving at a time so if you're somebody who might pick the head up narrow the arc here <laughs> It's going to be a guessing game to what part of the face you might hit it on. So once you're able to control those variables reasonably, you're going to get a not only a, a center face hitting motion, but you're going to get a, a more powerful motion too. Let's see if I can do both here. There it goes. Right dead in the center. Boy, did that feel good. So, although you can see in the slow motion, by no means am I perfect at either one of these, I try to contain this point, this point, as central as I can. I try to maintain this width as constant as I can. And it simply makes it much easier to hit the sweet spot when you can control those two variables. You don't have to be perfect to be really good but you probably have to be a little better at both of them than you are now. So do that exercise to keep the width. And you might practice your swing motion in front of a mirror with a piece of tape lining up with your nose. And you can practice keeping your nose on the tape as you swing the club back and through. And that will help you get a, a feel for a head that is a little bit steadier in space. You know, I think the number one exercise when Jack Nicholas would go see Jack Grout, his coach, when he was up and coming, Jack Grout would grab a big fistful of hair and let Jack Nicholas swing as hard as he could without pulling his hair out because a very steady head was in probably the number one most important thing in Jack Nicholas's upbringing. All right, I hope these tips give you a few more sweet spot hits in the coming weeks that's going to lead you to higher smash factor higher ball speed more distance and probably more accuracy too i wish you all the luck if you have some success with this i hope you'll come back and comment down below if you have any questions you can do that too thanks so much for watching i'm steve as usual i'll either see you in the next video or i'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway everybody take good care